Praise the name of the Lord, saints. It's good to see each one of you. and Thank you for enduring the week, waking up early in the morning so that we are prepared. We are equipped to be overcomers in this end time. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, we worship you and bless your holy name. We have seen your goodness in this week. Oh God, you've walked with us. You have saved us. You've ministered to us. Let your kingdom continue to come and your will be done in our lives and families. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I would like to welcome you once again to our, our online program called Behold the Bridegroom Cometh. The one to whom we are looking forward to be able to enjoy our union forever. And that is none other than Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We've been talking about the preparation of the bride. The Bible says in the book of Revelation that the bride has made herself ready. And there are certain things she needs to do to make herself ready. Yesterday we looked at the cleansing of the bride from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. And so today we'd like to take it deeper. I gave you an assignment which I believe is not just for one day. It's a continuous assignment. We begin to reflect. We examine ourselves as to whether we are walking in faith, walking in the light. Let me tell you, the walk of a believer is a continuous walk. You continually Check yourself, examine yourself, pray to God, cleanse me, deliver me, help me. Because we are in this world, but not of the world. And while we are there, we go through a number of things. People hurt us, people offend us. But the Bible says offense will increase in the last days. Okay? Paul writes to, I think Timothy chapter 4, concern, regarding the conditions of the heart of man. And is writing to the church. People will be lovers of themselves. Liars. Having a form of godliness. These are things that should make you shudder. Let me just look, turn into that scripture. I didn't write it in my preparation. But let me just look for it quickly. And then uh, we'll be able to proceed. The things that will happen. This, these last days is writing to the church. I think it is First Timothy chapter 4. Yes, let me read this for you. The Spirit clearly says that in latter times, which we are in, some will abandon the faith. Whom is he addressing? He's not talking to non believers. Is talking to believers in the house of God. They will do what? Abandon, live completely the faith and follow deceiving spirits. These are people who have been in the body of Christ, in the church, but now are following deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. That means they are going to be good students of demons. We are seeing that already in the city and in the nations. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose conscience have been seared as with a hot iron. Yesterday we looked at a conscience being cleansed from dead works so that we can serve the living God. And the cleansing of the conscience is by the blood of Jesus. So take the things we are sharing with you seriously. The Bible says they will forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods which God created to be received in thanksgiving by those who believe and those who know the truth. For everything God created is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. And this, yes. There are a number of expressions, things that we are going to see in the body of Christ. And we are warned that these are going to happen in the last days, the times where we are living in. People having a form of 
godliness. They are lovers of money, lovers of self. The God of self is being glorified now quite a lot. So check yourselves, examine yourselves. And that's the purpose of this program in the name of Jesus. As a, a believer, and from the very beginning, what God wanted to achieve in man is his image and likeness. Not the image of the world, not the image of Satan in us. He wants us to be like Christ. And that's why the restoration comes when we are restored back to him. And that Christ should be able to be formed in us. And we should be transformed, transformed into the image of God. In other words, that which we lost in the garden is what God is achieving to restore. But we must cooperate with God. Have you heard? Amen. Amen. Isaiah 43, 7 says, Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made, we have been created for God's glory and pleasure. And that means our expression and representation of God in this world must surely reflect it in Jesus' name. Now, as we continue to study the word of God, we are going to continue to look at the cleansing of our flesh, the cleansing of our spirits. Paul used a number of metaphors, figures of speech, to help us understand our preparation process. It talks about our old behavioral habits and desires that are of unregenerate nature. He uses the metaphors like putting off. If I had a coat here with me, so I didn't carry one, but I intended to carry one to demonstrate this. If I had a coat over me or a jacket, I would do what? I would remove it off from me and put it aside. Now, what you are seeing, the shirt that you are seeing, the white sparkling shirt you are seeing, was hidden before. Amen? Because of the coat that was over my shirt. Now you can see the shirt, the revelation of the shirt. There it is being revealed. There is an illumination that has come. But before that it was hidden, it was covered. So there are things, just like I told you, that Esther was taken through a process of cleansing, a process of scrubbing, to remove a number of things that would conceal her beauty, cover the beauty. Glory be to God. <laughs> Amen. The first time I went for a face scrub, at first, I didn't want it because I was asking the man, why do I need it? <laughs> I struggled with it. But he told me, you just try. I said, okay. And when he tried, I realized that the face, the way it looks, you apply oil, you clean it, it has to be scrubbed. I was able to see deep pores. I said, what? He said, yes, this is what it does. So once in a while, I go for it when I go cut my hair. Amen. And so what, that's what I'm trying to relate with. Putting off, it must be removed. Dead skin must be removed. It must be scrubbed off because it conceals your beauty. We should be able to reflect the glory of God. I believe most ladies understand what I'm talking about. And so Paul uses the metaphor of putting off and putting on garments. This is so much in the scriptures as we, we are going to see. Let me read Colossians chapter 1, chapter 3 from verse 1 to 12. Put, uh, since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts. Set. It is your responsibility. Listen to this structure of this paragraph. 
or sentence. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, not below. Where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died. Your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ is who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. We looked on Wednesday, we looked at the work of Ma. Okay, why was Ma and oil used in the cleansing process for the bride? Okay, it is to remove dead things out of us. It kills the flesh so that the beauty of the inner man of the spirit should be able to be expressed. Now, this is where we see different metaphors used. Put to death. Put to death. What does that mean? When something has died, it is not living anymore. Put to death. It is whose assignment? It is your assignment. And some of these things are resistant. <laughs> so you must apply pressure every day. You need the help. Therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, it must die. And the only way it should be able to, if you can know that it has died, is that even if you kick it, if you kick a dead corpse, turn them upside down, nothing. I was reading a sad story during the first lockdown. One of the mortuary attendants, I think in Soroti, <laughs> was saying the most obedient people on earth to deal with are dead people. Why? They are very obedient. They will not disturb you. Put the hand here. Turn them here. I am cutting this. I am removing this. They are not moving. They are not complaining. So God is asking us to put to death. It must die. Sexual immorality. Impurity. Lust evil desires and greed. Greed can manifest in a number of areas. Even where believers are lining for food, you can see a manifestation of greed. Mm, greed, where food is concerned. Greed, where lining at the bank is concerned. Some feel they are the ones to go first. The Bible says all these things are idolatry. So when you talk about idol worship, these are the ones God is talking about. Sexual immorality is idolatry. It occupies your mind. Impurity and lust occupy the soul, the, your whole thinking and mind. Evil desires, greed. And these ones will remove God out of your picture. Because of this, the wrath of God is coming. God will judge all this. The, you know, wrath is so strong. It's bigger than or stronger than anger. One of the teachers who was teaching me in Bible school told me that the, the wrath of God is so strong that God swears by it. So when the Bible says the wrath of God is coming, wrath is not the same as anger. <laughs> it's one of the highest degree of manifestation of anger and destruction of God. This is the Bible, not me. You, the thing, you used to walk in these ways, Paul is telling us. In the life you once lived. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as this. Number one, anger. Mm, anger. This is your responsibility. Rage, malice, slander, filthy language, flattering, filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other. Since you have taken off your old self with its practices, that old man, <laughs> and have put on the new self, 
which is being renewed, being renewed. The new self must be renewed. Is present continuous tense in the knowledge in the image of its creator. Let me tell you, this work, that's why the Bible says, work out your own salvation. Why do I work it out when I was saved already? Those are the people who question the work of God. They don't understand the scriptures. They take one scripture and they run with it. They don't look at the harmony of all the scriptures together so that you get the truth. That's the danger with deceptive lying spirits. They are going to use the word of God, but they are not in the word. They, are not, they have not dwelt in the word of God to be able to see eh, on all sides what does the scripture say. The scripture says we have been saved. They only run with that part. The Bible says we are being saved. That's what the Bible says. Work out your own salvation. Fear and trembling. And the Bible says, you will be saved. They represent different meanings and stages of your growth in life. It doesn't contradict itself. Have you heard? Amen. Verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothed yourselves with compassion. Remember that the bride must have a dress, a wedding dress that is glorious and sparkling. That dress is Jesus. She must be clothed with Jesus. She must remove all the flesh and she must be clothed with Jesus. It's the one that the Father desires. It's the one the Father paid the price for. I mean, send the Son to pay the price for. Amen. Clothe yourselves with compassion, with kindness. These are things you begin to practice. Humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And all of these virtues put on love. All of, uh, over all these virtues put on love. Put on love. Which binds them all together in perfect unity. Have you heard? You hear about putting on, putting off. Killing this. These are active verbs we need to employ. There are things God is telling us that we must remove. The works of the flesh, because the flesh will fight against the spirit. And so it is your responsibility. Say that with me. It is my responsibility. Because you know the things that you go through on a daily basis. You know that you need to walk in the light as we share, shared yesterday. Anything you are concealing will destroy you in darkness. Bring it out in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. And God will deliver you. And so I want us to look at a number of definitions of these things so that we understand. Is that one thing that I've learned through my study is to get the meaning from the original context. It helps you a lot to see the magnitude of the word, the strength of the word, the root, get to the root word. The things we need to put off, we need to understand them. We don't just gloss over them. And then you say, uh, an affair, you make it lighter. Okay? <laughs> Sin is sin. There's no small lie. Lie is lie. Galatians 5, 19-21 talks about the things we need to put off. And what are they? 
Number one is adultery. You know, you can be shocked. People don't want to hear these things, but Paul writes them on and on to the church because it is happening. Paul, as one of the chamberlains, the harem, working on Esther, is telling them, remove this one, remove. I am I'm seeing something, remove it. You will not stand well because these things are judged by the great groom. Are we together? What is adultery? It's one person married, but having sex with someone else. Last of other spouses. You are not devoted to your spouse. You are lasting after others. Because others probably have worked on theirs. It is also to indulge in illicit lust. I want you to begin to examine yourself as you go through this list. I'm just helping you bring things that are hidden into light so that we judge them. Amen? Giving yourselves to illicit sex without payment. Gratify illicit sex. Provoking incest and faithfulness to God. These are all under the definition of adultery. Jesus says, if we look at, we have already committed, and if you've been married, so what do you do? You need to submit to the processes of God. God, work in my heart. Work in my spirit. Work in my soul. Work in my mind. The Bible says each one is enticed by his own evil desires which reside in the heart. And one gives birth to another and at the end it leads to death. So deal with it when it is still at the level of desire. Praise the name of the Lord. Number two is fornication. I'm just following the list of Galatians. Is having sex and not being married to each other. Probably you can even be staying together. Amen. Having sex and not being married to each other. Between unmarried or married. Indulge in unlawful lust. Illicit sexual practice with the payment as in prostitution. Illicit sex practice of either sex lust in the heart. All these are bundled under fornication. And God wants us to address them in the name of Jesus. When the Bible talks about remove every form of uncleanness, what does that mean? It means moral impurity. Okay? Evil, vile, something unlikable. Whatever is opposite of purity, and that also includes pornography. They are unclean. They defile your mind. Things that you do through forms. The practices, flatterings, they will bring uncleanliness over your soul and spirit. Whatever which is opposite of purity. Having evil thoughts because pornography will bring evil thoughts and actions. God says that homosexuality, bestiality, and all other forms of sexual perversion render a person unclean. That is what the Bible says. There is also lasciviousness. What does it mean? Don't just pass over it. You need to understand what it means. So that when you are dealing with something, you deal with it. You deal with what you understand. Indicates sexual interest 
or expressive of lust or lewdness, promiscuous, not the act of fornication, but everything leading up to it. Being improper in your actions and your communications, like flattering. You walk in a suggestive manner. You look in a suggestive manner. If there's something you want to drive to or bring people to. Going around scantily clad in order to induce impure or lustful thoughts and feelings. Dances with sexual connotations toward people. There's something you are suggesting. You are inducing. <laughs> that is improper as believers. In other words, the desire in your heart is evil, but you want to spread it. You want to affect many. You want to attract many. There's a place you want to lead them to. Dances with emphasis <laughs> on certain parts of the body. Okay? Your facial expressions. These things are happening. One of them is flirting. You behave as though sexually attracted to someone, but playfully rather than with serious intentions. It is seen. It will lead you to somewhere. Oh, I'm not doing it. You are flirting. You behave as though sexually attracted. You are behaving to someone. But playfully, rather than with serious intentions, the way you look, the way you move, the way you do certain things, you know you are playing with this person. You want to see how they respond. Suggestive moves. Having casual contact with someone while purposely entertaining sexual undertones. And this can be very dangerous for us spiritually. You begin to open yourself to demons, sexual demons. And there at the end of the day, yes, you've not done the thing, but you are getting overcome. Flee. For it's a sign of what is in the heart. But I say, anyone who even looks at a woman with lust in his eyes has already committed adultery in her heart or in his heart. You've committed adultery with her. This also includes women. Matthew 5, 28 to 29. Check your heart. Does it need cleansing? Are there things you need to put off? Number five, idolatry. We learned also earlier that things like immorality, all these things are idolatry. The worship of idols, because there are things that you worship. You give it much more attention. It consumes you more than God himself. It removes you from focusing on God. The worship of idols, excessive or blind adoration, you adore them. Reverence and devotion to anything or anyone other than God. You are so devoted to internet, so devoted to Facebook, so devoted to other movies. Even food becomes idol. Though, what are you doing? You are dethroning God. Witchcraft. The Bible says, <laughs> how does God define witchcraft? In the book of Samuel. Is it first Samuel? We shall get to that. Witchcraft has many dimensions. Practicing magic using demonic powers. It's happening in the church, by the way. Sorcery. Practice of dealing with evil spirit. How does evil spirit come in the church? Paul talks about deceiving spirits. Magical incantations. They are witchcraft prayers. And casting spells and charms upon someone using magic potions, drugs of various kinds. Okay? 
Disobedience to God is considered in scripture as sin of witchcraft. Only God can help us. Amen. How about hatred? Intense dislike or hostility. Lack of regard for another. Bitter dislike and ill will against anyone or somebody. A tendency to hold grudges against and be angry at someone wanting to hurt them. When you hate someone, the Bible says you have killed, you have murdered. God knows we are in this world. We will be offended. You need to go through the blood. The Bible talks about variance in that list. Variance is conflict, arguing and fighting. There are people who just like to argue. Not agreeing when you should. A quarrel being difficult to deal with. You just quarrel some. Blah, 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 blah. You are always right. You can't listen to any instruction. Babbler. You become a babbler. You babble all the time. You like to argue. Even with things that you need, don't need to talk about. The Bible talks about emulations. Emulations. Resentment. What is it? A resentment against a rival. You can't compete healthily. A person enjoying success or, or advantage to copy another to equal or surpass. Because so and so did, so you must do it to overcome them. They can't, they have to be under you. I've worked with such kind of people before, even in church. They want to pray more because you are praying more. They are competing with your anointing and the grace. Not knowing that we are called differently. They seek to surpass. And outdo others. And bridled rivalry. In religion, in business, in society and other fields of endeavor. You only reap what you sow. You will break yourself. The Bible talks about wrath as part of the things we need to put off. You need to understand. I'm just helping you. Okay? Vengeance or punishment as the consequence of great anger, fierceness, determined and lasting anger as in getting back at someone for a perceived wrongdoing. What about strife? Mentioning this so that we check ourselves. These are things that are dealt with in the presence of God. The harems, the teachers. These are the things that as you are gathered, because when people get born again, they are gathered from all over the world with the different backgrounds, having gone through different things. So when you are brought before us in the house of God, the house of the king, we work on you to remove these things. We need to tell you this is what we don't want. It brings a scar. It brings a spot. What is strife? Struggling in opposition. Contest for superiority or advantage for selfish gain. Are you doing that as a believer? Because promotion only comes from God. It's a work of the flesh. Because the intention is to hurt the other, either physically or mentally or emotionally. Striving. How about seditions? It's rebellious disorder. Causing trouble, stirring up strife. In church, in government, at work, at home or any other place. What about heresies? Should I continue? <laughs> Yes, give me a thumbs up. Divisions in religious communities. The world itself has, so, has no evil meaning. It simply refers to a doctrinal view or belief conflicting with the recognized and accepted tenets of a system. You get that? Because it causes division. You want to accept 
adultery. It causes heresy and you want to preach about and support it. How about envyings? It is close to jealousy. A feeling of discontent or covetousness with regard to another's advantage, success or position. Ill will. Jealousy. Thinking a person is not worthy of having what they have because you feel you are more deserving. I deserve it better than them. Why is God using them and not me? Why is he having this and I don't have this? Can you imagine all this crowded in a heart of a human being and it's not dealt with? You can go sing and dance and praise the Lord. Murders. The intentional killing of another human being. Organized slaughter. This includes being involved in a murder even if you are not directly responsible. In the new covenant, when you hate one another, you have murdered. Drunkenness. Believers nowadays are drinking too much. Many are hiding. Even leaders are hiding until they get drunk. Intoxication. Alcohol. But it also includes anything that, like drugs. Excessive drinking or drug use to the point that you dismiss or even lose judgment and self-control. Yeah? <laughs> we also have revelings, parting hard. You what about party after party? You don't have time for self, don't have time to check your life. These are un unbecoming behaviors for believers. Indulging in loud, boisterous festivities for no apparent reason. Just having fun. You think life is just about fun 24-7. The letting loose of inhibitions and good judgments. Getting rowdy. Going on a drunken rampage. It also involves rioting. So these are things God wants us to put on. The list is a lot. But I've just taken time to open our eyes. We have a culture. We have a behavior. We are supposed to conform to his likeness. It is work. Preparation, sanctification is work. And you must know what you're doing. You must know the tools you're supposed to use. And you must submit to the process. Do you want to become a worthy bride? Don't say it is too much. By the Spirit of God, you will overcome. The word to put off, it means taking off the clothes, taking off the sinful life, taking off the old man. It implies removal of dirty clothes at the end of the day. And after removing what do you need to do? You put on. And we put on Christ. Christ's nature. Christ's essence. Characteristics. Manifestations. That's what people want to see. Amen. How should the bride look like? The bride has adorned herself. In the New Testament, we, there are many areas the Bible tells us to put off. Colossians 3.9 says, Those in Christ have already put off the old man. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices. Those in Christ are instructed to put off the old man. You are taught to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. It is corrupted. You can't entertain it for long. Ephesians 4, 22. We are supposed to put away all sin and vice. 
Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor. Do you speak truth? For we are members of one another. Ephesians 4, 25. Romans 13, 12 says, The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So, then, let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Hebrews 12 verse 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us also lay aside every weight and sin, their weights and their sin. Lay them aside. You've come to the harem, which clings so closely. It clings. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Hebrews 12 verse 1. You can't run with this weight. That's what you see. Sometimes feel I'm tired. I don't feel like praying. I'm praying, but things are not happening. I'm hitting a roof. You have got weights. Lay aside every weight and sin. They are crowding your heart. You may dress well, look nice, be a leader, but you are weighty. You can't even pray for one hour. You can't sustain prayer because you have a lot of weight in your spirit. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness. These are written to the church. And receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. James 1, 21. So, put away all malice and deceit and hypocrisy and envy and slander. All slander. 1 Peter 2, 1 is talking to the church. You and I. I'm starting with myself. Glory be to God. So what are we supposed to put on? If we take time to put off this list I'm giving us, what are we supposed to put on? We have cleansed ourselves as the bride. We have washed ourselves. We have done a lot of cleansing, oiling, and all that. After that, the next thing is you put off. I mean, you put on. We are commanded to put on Christ. For as many of you as were baptized in Christ have put on Christ. That's what the world wants to see. People fight so that people identify them. No. Let people see Jesus. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. It is your responsibility to do what? To put on. It's a command given to you. And you need to see yourself putting it on. And make no provision for the flesh. It's a command given to you. Who does that? You. Thank God for Esther. Esther took every detail Haggai was telling him. We need to put on the new man. You have put on the new self. Which is being renewed in the knowledge. After the image of his creator. You are taught to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Ephesians 4, 24. We are called to put on the full armor of God in war. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. We are being shown how a bride needs to dress. Because you may, you may fail to choose what type of dressing. The types of earrings you need to put on. Put on the whole armor of God. And the whole armor of God is Jesus. That you may be able to stand against the schemes of the enemy. Stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth. Who is the truth? Truth is a person. It's Jesus. It's the one that can hold you. Truth will set you free. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Who is our righteousness? Jesus. 
the shield of faith. Our faith, who is the oath and the finisher of our faith? Jesus. The gospel, readiness to preach the gospel of peace. Who is the prince of peace? Since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet of hope of salvation. 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. Are you seeing the dressing of the bride? These are things you need to be practicing every day. It's through prayer. We are also told to put on love and other virtues. When you put on all this, when you stand in prayer in the realm of the spirit, you have got the voice of authority. You can now address Haman and deal with his seven sons. You can now legislate in the realm of the spirit and war against wickedness. But other than that, you'll just be a noisemaker. You appear to people to be praying, but you don't have power and voice in the realm of the spirit. The Bible says, put on then as God's chosen ones. God has chosen us. Holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Colossians 3, 12. Praise the name of the Lord. 3, 14 says, And above all this, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect enemy. That means without love, things disintegrate. Praise the name of the Lord. Those in Christ have perishable mortal bodies that will one day put on imperishable, immortal heavenly bodies. For this, is, this perishable body must put on the imperishable. When we are getting glorified at resurrection, when we are being given a new body, we shall put on the imperishable. This is the work of God. And this mortal body will put on immortality. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. If indeed by putting it on, we may not be found naked. Sometimes when you dream that you are naked, he says you are not covered, you are not dressed. Sometimes you don't have shoes. For while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened. Not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed. So that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. 2 Corinthians 5, 12, 5 to. Beloved, we have work to do in our preparation. We are not just preparing for the bride alone, but this positions us to have authority in the realm of the spirit. This positions us as a witness of Jesus to the world. This positions us as a gospel message. When they look at our life, the world will be attracted to Jesus. So, I've given us a list of the things I want us to pray of. I'll just start you off. And I want, you to take, I want you to take responsibility because it is yours. It is your life and my life. We need to learn how to put off. We need to be cleansed. We dealt with that yesterday. After cleaning yourself, there are things you need to remove. In fact, you start by putting off. You get cleaned and then you put on. That's how we bathe. And we bathe every day. We don't put on the same clothes every day. That's why we need the blood of Jesus to cleanse us. As so I want to make a general prayer. But you know the areas that you are dealing with. The things you need to deal with. So I'm going to leave you to pray, to seek God, even continue throughout this weekend, so that God can help you and I 
in Jesus name. Father in the name of Jesus we humbly come before you. We desire to be a worthy bride. We, there are things you've shown us today that we need to put off. The old man. We need to put off all kinds of evil that have been manifesting in our lives. But one thing we understand that is not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. And therefore we submit to the working of the Holy Ghost to help us put off every form of wickedness and be able to submit ourselves to the cleansing, to the purging and purifying work of the blood of Jesus. But also help us to adorn ourselves in the beauty of the clothing of the bride, putting on Jesus Christ, putting on love, putting on the new man, put on the new self, putting on the whole armor of God, putting on the armor of light, putting on love and other virtues like uh, co compassion, kindness, humility, putting on the imperishable. Lord, I pray that this is what the church is going to pursue in our season of preparation. May you help us to make room for the glory of God. We give you thanks. I pray for your people that, Lord, you will build us up as an overcoming bride. And we thank you that by the blood we are redeemed. and We are overcomers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to us. Give us peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Next week we are going higher. I pray call others. Alert them. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Gives us a thumbs up. And let us know how you are doing. You can post in this comment section. Let us know. You have questions. Bring them forward so that we, all of us, have something to contribute. I believe God will help us. And therefore, let us walk in the light so that we can be cleansed properly. In Jesus' name. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Amen.